Hey guys, so I want to talk to you about how a rental payment holiday would work for tenants. Um, and I think this is important for landlords and tenants to understand because I think one of the challenges is on the face of it, you think a payment holiday is that you stop payments, but you don't have to make them up. In actual fact, just like the landlord's mortgage payment holiday, it's actually added to the loan and you would that would be the same case. You're not going to get a free lunch, okay? And, and the reality is, is landlords can't afford to give you a free lunch. So if you're a tenant there, this is not going to be a freebie, okay? At best, the payments stop for three months, okay? Or a portion of the payments, but then you have to make them up over the following six months, which could, you know, have a, another impact and, and, you know, and another impact. Now, for me, that's not a good thing. I'd much rather see the government give people, everybody, a direct check like they're talking about doing in, in the UK, uh, in the US, you know? So, because actually, the, the landlord's getting a mortgage payment holiday is makes up about 60% of their costs, okay? The other 40% would be some profit if they're making profit, but with the way the tax works now, most landlords aren't even making money on the cash flow unless they go into a high yield sort of stuff, you know, which has its own risks attached to it. Um, but the reality is, is they've got ground rent service charges, they've got insurances, they've got all those sort of things that they have to pay. So it's not a case of, you know, make don't make the mistake as a tenant that a payment holiday means you stop paying and you don't have to pay it back at some point. Yeah. Now the reality is if you are in difficulty, there's already the facility there to speak to the agent or the landlord and they can provide for you. Now the reality is generally the way that the legislation works, the landlord, um, the tenant fee ban one, is basically that if you're late in your rent for more than 14 days, okay, two weeks, then they can charge you 3% above base. That is one of the few allowable charges that are there, okay? Now, the reality is that is there. Now, that may, you may be able to negotiate that getting waived. You may be able to have the landlord not take legal action or move towards eviction, you know, um, if you stop paying your rent. Now, the, re but the reality is, from the advice I would be giving right now, unless we get something from the government that clearly defines what is going to happen and how we're going to uh, handle this, is that we would, as a landlord or as an agent, still proceed through to eviction, yeah? And the reality is, is they're likely to stop those evictions happening. And and possibly, you know, it's, it's going to take a, a month, two months, three months. Well, it's going to take at least two months anyway, which may see us through this whole coronavirus. So in the most part, a landlord is not going to stop the process. They're going to continue the process because obviously for them, you know, this is their livelihood in a lot of cases. So it's not a case of just saying, well, you know, you're making all this money so you can afford it. Most landlords cannot afford it. You know, I think tenants think this, you know, that, that everyone's making so much money as a landlord. We aren't. In actual fact, there's been so many, um, you know, re regulations. You know, there's over 170 pieces of regulation now. We have, as landlords, you know, um, on, over our shoulders, things like $30,000 worth of fines, unlimited fines, $5,000 fines. It is so draconian and so punitive in the way things are set up now, it's actually gone the other way. It's, it's gone ridiculous against landlords. Now, we can argue to the cow, cows come home. The reality is we're all in this together, and I think it's important that we understand that most landlords, you know, they, you know they're willing to do their bit. Yeah, but if that means that it's the tenant, you know, versus the landlord, and it's the landlord that's suffering and, and causing hardship, well, you know, that's where there's a fight to be had and a discussion to be had. And, you know, the reality is if you are in hardship, then make sure you communicate. Yeah, that's one of the key things. Communicate with your agent, communicate with your landlord. They may still go through the process, but it's unlikely that anything will happen for it for at least two months, okay? Um, because it's just not gonna get to court. And certainly right now, nothing's gonna go to court, all right? So, you know, as much as there are, you know, there's evictions that happen on a regular basis, the courts are closing down. They're not progressing things through. I mean, the section 21, which is the, you know, uh, no fault eviction side of things, that is st still in place, but that may be changing very soon there. Boris made a comment about rushing through the legislation. My concern with that is, you know, I'm all f I've got no problem with the Section 21 going, but then we need to make sure that, that the courts 
are shored up and are, are financed and are able to actually progress things through quickly so that landlords can get their property back. I mean, for the most part, if you can't pay your rent, we would rather have you out of the property sooner and get it relet to somebody else. Yeah, that we would rather that in all cases. You know, I mean, these, you know, I know we talk about slum landlords and they are out there, but the reality is by far the majority of landlords are good people who just want to make money and just want their, you know, their, their investments to be effortless. So I think that, you know, don't think that it's a free lunch. It's not going to be a free lunch. You will have to pay for that rent somehow. And whether that be, you know, you get a three month payment holiday or a month's payment holiday, whatever it is, and then that's added on a monthly basis. So your rent actually increases, you know, but somehow you are going to have to pay for that rent. It's not going to be a free rent. And you know, I don't see that happening unless the government is going to in inject money into either the landlords or it's the tenants or perhaps all of us. Now for me, you know, we're in this together. So rather than fighting between ourselves, let's point our attention to the government and get them to do what they need to do. Now they're saying that, that and they're certainly looking like they're gonna do that. It's light on detail right now, but hopefully they do the right thing. And what I think that is, is probably injecting money directly into the individuals as opposed to bailing out the airlines and the banks and all these sort of people um, and the financial markets. You know, we're talking big numbers given to those guys. What about us as individuals, you know, who are struggling and who potentially are losing jobs? You know, that's all happening right now. It's all good to say there's 330 billion or 50 billion here and this much there, but where is the detail on that? And that's what we need right now. But anyway, guys, hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into what a payment holiday might mean. We might see some more details come out, in which case I'll be straight on and giving you a video. But any um, questions, chuck them in the uh, comments. You know, subscribe to my channel if you want to know more. If you're interested in what's happening with the coronavirus and where things are at, then I've got a day by day account of where things are happening. And so you can watch that. All right, guys, um, stay safe during this time. And you know, if you're working from home, you know, stay, uh, you know, make sure you look after your mental um, faculties and get out there, enjoy some, call some friends up, you know, and share some stories. I mean, if you've got video, use video, um, you know, don't use the isolation to get you down and don't let the media get you down. There's plenty of good things happening. And you know what, we will see it through this, you know, landlords and tenants together. You know, um, I just hope the politicians are really, you know, behind what they've been saying. But anyway, guys, have a great day. Live with passion. Remember to subscribe and comment. See ya.